Okay, so for this question, it's showing a coil X that's not electrically linked, but will be linked by flux to a coil Y. You're viewing it from observer P. It says when the switch is closed, there's a current in coil X, the current's in a clockwise direction as viewed from position P. So it's going around clockwise. Clockwise means that he's looking at the south pole, okay? As you can see from this sketch here, therefore the field lines are basically developing in that direction as, as the switch is closed. There's a magnetic flux that develops once the switch is closed going into that direction. And then the question says, explain how Lenz's law predicts the direction of the induced current when the switch is open and when it's closed. Oh, I didn't do when it's closed. I've got, I got halfway through this. Okay, so Lenz's law tells us the effect, induced effect opposes the change it's causing. That's the first thing. In X, it's going clockwise. Therefore, this is going to cause flux lines from observer P. That's going to say they're going that way, as I've just said. There's going to be a changing flux, which is going to induce a current in Y. And this must oppose the change. That's because of Lenz's law. This, this uh, current in Y will oppose the change that's causing it. Therefore, it will attempt to create a flux towards P. If it's attempting to create flux towards P because it's opposing the flux that's going away from P, what it's going to do is going to create a current in Y that will be anti-clockwise if it's observed from P. So if this is going clockwise like that, as the current develops, this is going to develop a current going anti-clockwise uh, to try and... Um, so if this is going clockwise, it's going to try and develop a current going anti-clockwise to oppose it. Now, the last thing is... When the switch is opened, once opened, I'm going to say once opened, the reverse is true, okay? The reverse happens. So when the uh, switch is open, these field lines are going to attempt to diminish. Because there's a changing flux of this, this is going to oppose the change that's causing it, so the current's going to switch to try and keep these field lines present as long as possible, okay? So that's how that one will work. Right, next one. Uh, the earth inductor has a coil of 500 turns, says the component of the field is going into the page, those little X's going into there, and as it rotates, right, as it rotates you get a voltage induced. Okay? It's recorded, uh, rotated at 1.5 revolutions per second, and it asks us to determine the flux density of the horizontal component of the mag earth's magnetic field. Well. We know that the maximum EMF is given by BAN 2 pi F. And when it's rotating at 1.5 um, revolutions per second, that's 1.5 hertz, basically. So we need to think, well, we need to first of all read off the graph to see what this maximum EMF is. And when you do look at the graph, you find it to be 5.6 microvolts. Okay, so that's where this has come from, the 5.6 microvolts, that's E0. Then we're just going to divide through B by the area times by the number of turns times by two pi f to find out what the um, to find out what the um, flux density is. So first of all, we calculate the area. Well, it's pi r squared. That gives us whatever it does. Well, let's don't calculate that. I'm just saying what the area is there. Shove that into this bit here. We've got the um, the field divided by two pi divide times by 1.5 times by the area times by the number of coils and that gives us 3, point, uh, 3 times 10 to the 9 Tesla. And that is the end of question 10.